Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today it is Friday, April 12th, 2024. That's more than four years of Torah every single day. We're on broadcast 1034 since we began this community March 18th of 2020. And today is 189 since October 7th. We are praying for safety and for healing and for the return of our entire family. But what we have done for the last four and a half years is greet each other by name, to say good morning, to learn some Torah and to infuse every day with hope, with faith, with love. So let's find each other. Let's learn a little bit of Torah together. Let's see who's here. So Grace, it's good to see you. Richard and Rosa, Siona and Linda, Anya and Dale Bokertov. Hi, Barry. Hi, Peter. Julianne and Shari. Amy and Carl. Natalia, Debbie and Arlene. Good morning. Hi, Penny. It's good to see you. Hi, Pete. Hope you're well. Linda and Arlene. Good morning. Catherine and Sharon. Natalie, Debbie. Jonathan and Anna. Lydia and Judy. Bokertov. Hi, Kim. Keith and Minna. Cecile and Susan. Hi, Stan. Hi, Jerry. All right, friends. It is, as Penny is reminding us, broadcast 1034 since we began this community. It is day 189 since October 7th. There's a lot on our minds and a lot in our hearts. So let's take a second. Let's take a breath, sing a blessing, learn some Torah, give each other and ourselves some much needed strength and get ready for Shabbat. Here we go. good to see you. Glad we're all here. Let's take a breath as we're about to learn some Torah. And as we do that, friends, let's send our hearts all the way to Jerusalem, all the way to Tel Aviv, to Haifa, to the south, to the north. We are a people who's been going through a very hard part of history uh, for the last 189 days. Yes, it is broadcast 1034. Yes, we have come through so much upheaval in our world together as a community and we will be together as a community please God so that we will move forward and have some good news together sometime soon but right now it's it's hard Pesach is just about a week away and next week we'll be looking at Pesach I'll be giving um, some learning around the Seder around the history of Pesach itself Um, and today let's look at the Parsha and I'll share some hope some hope, some beautiful, beautiful experiences that I was blessed to have along with the UJA community this last week, which I think point the way forward for us all. So let's take a second look at some Torah. It's Parsha Tazria. Often we read 
this week Tazria and next week's Parsha Mitzorah, we read them as one. But because it's a leap year, because we have an additional month of Adar this year, because of the way the calendar works, we have um, two weeks of opportunity to look at the disease known as Mitzorah. Mitzorah, as we've been sharing this week, is often misunderstood as leprosy or some other identifiable skin disease, but actually, that's not what Mitzorah is. It is a disease, as pointed out by the Parsha, whose criteria is that it's more than skin deep. That doesn't mean it's subcutaneous. What it means is this is a spiritual ailment and it requires a spiritual fix, which is why instead of going to a doctor, if you had Mitzorah, you would go to a priest. Now, of course, the whole idea of medicine wasn't the same then, but what I want to point out today is that if you look beneath the surface, you see some things that could really, really point the way forward. If you had Mitzorah, you needed to see beneath the surface to be healed of this problem. But we're not talking about Mitzorah. On the surface, we've got plenty of issues, and I want to share with you three vignettes, three vignettes from this week, which are beneath the surface, but are immediately accessible. Immediately accessible. You just have to be at the right place at the right time, but they are real, friends. Just last week, I was blessed to be with uh, 230 high school students, Jewish high school students, who came together for the Hadar Mut Beit Din, which was a chance, like a moot court, to come from synagogues and from schools all around the country and internationally, and there was a parallel one happening in Israel on the same day, to make a case through the use of Jewish law and Jewish values um, in competition with each other. But as these young Jewish teenagers came together, these beautiful souls, their spirit was uncontrollable, and they kept breaking into song, holding each other. There are videos on, online if you'd like to see. I posted them last week too, but so did Hadar, and so did the Maimonides Fund that helped make it possible. And among the songs they sang was Hatikva. They just, on their own, hundreds of young Jews singing Hatikva Arminar. The entire building, the hotel we were staying at, the whole place was riveted and vibrating with this hopeful energy where young Jews were saying in the midst of what's happening today, Od lo avda tikvatenu, we haven't yet lost our hope. Just two days later, I was blessed to be in a room full of young Jewish professionals from New York City who also stood together, not only sang Hatikva, but wanted and accomplished something really important, which was to be with their people. This is the language I have heard from so many young people over the last week, that what we are looking for is just to be together. And so I sang Hatikva at least the second time, even though we sing it every morning. And then yesterday. Yesterday I had the most emotional moment. I wasn't alone in having it. Thank God Penny was there many of my colleagues and dear friends, supporters and donors and professionals and, and volunteers gathered on the seventh floor at UJA headquarters. And uh, let me only interrupt that Rose is sharing that she just had surgery, but before they went, she went into surgery, they let her finish singing Hatikva with us all. That moves me, Rose. Thank you. On the seventh floor of UJA just yesterday, we gathered with the help of our partner organizations, self-help, with um, many, many Holocaust survivors who come together annually for a model Seder at UJA. I was blessed to lead the Seder, but there was an army of angels there to serve our heroes, our teachers, our beloved survivors. And, you know, I, I was blessed to have a moment with all of the volunteers who are about to, to serve the Seder and to sit with the survivors, all of whom are, are well advanced in years, many of whom um, live in poverty. There are about 13,000 Holocaust survivors who, um, who are living in the New York area, and 60% of them are living in poverty, part of our commitment, our sacred oath as a Jewish community is not only to say the words, never again, 
but to honor and protect and respect those who survived, those who are bearing testimony by being alive and sharing their stories. And so I led Seder and think about this. The ancient rabbis 2000 years ago framed the language of freedom on the story of the Exodus, just as we were commanded in the Torah. But the rabbis who are doing that reframing are living under Roman occupation. And now thousands of years later, we look to them for strength and support and guidance. And as we left that room, it occurred to me, and I, I was aiming not to emphasize October 7th for the survivors, because I didn't want to compound their trauma. It was an enormous challenge for us all to be present and to be intentionally joyful. We managed in beautiful ways. You can see the video on UJA's social media platforms of singing Dayenu with survivors. But I, I was planning on not emphasizing October 7th, and there was one just powerful soul, Sam, for those who know, Sammy. And he is a force to be reckoned with, a survivor who has always been part of our work, always present for Seder. And he will be part of a Shabbos dinner that we are going to hold for young Jewish professionals on Long Island coming up. And he motioned me over and took my hand, gently and politely, but undeniable, this man, this beautiful human being. He said, I want us to take a moment of silence for the hostages. And I said, of course, Sammy. And so holding his hand toward the end of the Seder, where we often sing Chasal Seder Pesach Gil Chato, we, um, we have completed the Seder as best we can. And we often sing L'Shana Haba'a B'Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Um, we rose a room full of Holocaust survivors and their students, all of us, all of us, all of us are their students. And in my heart of hearts, even though I'm not comparing the experiences at all, every Jew alive today is a survivor again. We must bear testimony. And yesterday, for the third powerful time, although every time we sing Hatikva is powerful, I stood with a room of Holocaust survivors and sang Hatikva. It is beneath the surface, friends. On the surface is such extraordinary pain. It's true. We are going through terrible, terrible times. And the conjecture that we might not have our hostages alive, which is being spoken about seriously, is something for us to contend with. But two other vignettes that I'll share through my tears, of course, and I'm imagining with yours too. And this is strong, this is strengthening to be together as it has been for four and a half years. I want you to remember how important you are. Without you, this community wouldn't be. I'm so grateful for the strength that we bring each other. So in addition to those experiences being with Jewish teenagers who wouldn't not sing Hatikva, and young Jewish professionals who just need each other and sang Hatikva, and Holocaust survivors who demanded that we sing Hatikva. How dare we say no? My God, what a gift to be commanded to hope by our survivors. Just last night, um, I was at a college fair with my kids thinking about colleges and one of the representatives recognized me. From the week after October 7th, where we gathered at UJA with Rachel and Jonathan Goldberg Poland, in the immediate aftermath of October 7th, pledging to be part of their hearts and their lives and their family to champion the release of Hirsch and all of the hostages. This person who saw me at the college fair last night said, I recognize you. You were there with my uncle and aunt, and you 
with UJA and the Jewish world have been with us since the beginning. We cannot thank you enough. These moments are real, friends, and they are ongoing. But I would amplify to your hearts, really, the command that I, I was present to receive yesterday from the Holocaust survivors who had a model Seder at UJA last, uh, yesterday. I would amplify their command. We are not allowed not to hope. We must sing Hatikva. We must live the path of survival. And of course, more than that, to thrive, to grow, to love the world, to heal, to champion our people, to champion every person. All of that is the mandate that is beneath the surface right now. But I, I hope that I'm able to communicate with all of you that while my surface is beset by headlines, beneath the surface is a new reality that will emerge. And in a room full of Holocaust survivors yesterday who demanded the joy of singing, who sang Dayenu, who made us, we didn't have to work very hard, but made us sing Hatikva, made us open our hearts and stand resolute, who demonstrated what it is to survive. I went beneath the surface again and found my heart. Yes, yesterday, thank you, Linda. Lily, Lily Ebert, who's a 100-year-old survivor, became a great-great-grandmother. There's a beautiful picture of her holding her great-great-grandchild, five generations. Am Yisrael Chai, friends. Yesterday reminded me, Am Yisrael Chai. And I hope that I'm conveying it to you in a way that you can feel. Am Yisrael Chai. We are a people who lives, who knows how to live, who knows how to love life, who will fight for life. We always have, we always will. We thought we were a little bit ahead on this trajectory towards freedom. We thought we were a little bit further along, but we're on this trajectory and we are not going back, never again. So, because Sammy told me to, and because of one other experience. When we were done singing Hatikva, a 92-year-old man walked to the front of the room, took my hand, and in Hebrew said, Hayiti tzanchan b'chamishim v'sheish. I was a paratrooper in 56. And then he started to cry, and he held the flag, and he said, Zesheli, that is mine. So, Zeshalanu, this is ours. This is ours. This star, that's our heart. Sammy told us to sing. The survivors remind us to hope. And all of our ancestors are present, especially as we work our way towards Pesach. So, this is yours. This is yours, friend. We have earned this, and we will continue to earn this. There is much beneath the surface that we can tap into again so that we can build our strength as a people and face tomorrow. Let's do that. Let's sing a song for Shabbos, and then we'll sing Hatikva, and then we're going to have a beautiful Shabbat because we remember how.
All right, friends. We are commanded to hope. Let's sing it. Kol hod baleva penima nefesh Yehudi homia ulefate mizrach kadima ayin letzion sofia od lo avda tikvatenu ha tikvabat shnot alpayim liot am khovshi beyatsenu eretz zion virushalayi liot am khovshi Be'yatzeinu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Bring them home now. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Chai, friends. Shabbat Shalom. See you tomorrow. Not tomorrow. See you on Monday. Bye, everybody.